Hey guys, it's Astria here with our next tutorial for the model making series. We are now moving on to doing the UV unwrapping. These are going to be in multiple parts simply because I'll be doing it in sections. So like the body, maybe the hair, the clothes and whatnot. Normally I do the UV unwrap all in one day because it's very simple and fast to do. But for purposes of making this as easy as possible to follow, I'm going to just do it in sections. So today we are going to be working on the body, which is also including the face as well. So UV unwrapping might seem very intimidating, especially if it's your first time making a model, especially your first time making a character model. There are certain things that you have to think of. Now, I am by no means a professional. My way might actually not be the best way to do it, but it works. So as long as it works, it's fine. One thing I do want to make very clear is that the typical way that I unwrap hair is that I don't. Because of the way that I make hair with curves, curves at least in Blender 2.83 and maybe up, they auto unwrap, so they are a flat square of the UV map. Now I make a flat square texture that wraps around the hair of each strand and it makes a really nice loop and texture. Uh, you'll see this example used in most of my models. If you guys absolutely want me to unwrap hair, I will show you. Make sure to leave a comment down below saying that you would like me to cover it, but otherwise we're just gonna not bother unwrapping the hair for these tutorials. Especially if you followed my hair tutorial by making it with curves, you don't really need to unwrap it unless you have a very specific way that you want it to be textured. We are going to hide everything that we won't be needing and this is where you really need to start renaming things as I should be doing. But I'm not gonna do that right now. Here we go. Okay so now we have just everything. Uh, I'm gonna make a new collection quickly and just call it outfit so then we have everything separated and just everything except for the teeth I should really re-enable those everything you hid just put it in there and then forget about it <laughs> okay so so keep an eye on down here I'll do my best to explain what buttons I'm pressing I will probably end up forgetting I just do this very naturally uh, but keep an eye down, down here as it will track what I am pressing. Uh, slow down the video if you absolutely have to. I do recommend doing that. It can be very helpful. I do it a lot with speed videos. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to go to the UV editing tab. So I'm going to start from the face and we're going to work our way down. Now because we have attached our face to the body, it might be a bit weird. But we're going to go into edit mode and we're going to do edge selection mode, which is up here. So we're going to select the base of our neck. And that is where we're going to make our first cut by control E and then mark seam. And as you can see, nothing has happened. It's still quite a mess because we have extruded things from a cylinder and the cylinder is typically auto unwrapped anyway. So what you need to do is press U and unwrap and then you'll be able to see the effects of your unwrapping. So I'm going to press U again and do live unwrap because then any cut that you make it auto unwraps it for you. You don't need to keep pressing U and then unwrap. There are times that you might need to actually switch back and forth from live unwrap and without live unwrap because if you messed up or you forgot something or you want to change an unwrap or something and you already have your UV map laid out, live unwrap will completely mess that up and then you'll have to redo it again. So be mindful about what you are unwrapping and how you're doing it. So that is our first cut. Now I'm going to do it around the edge of our eyes. Mark a seam. So then we separate our sclera of our character. And I'm going to select the mouth and we're going to do the same thing. So then we separate the inside of our mouth. Now you can see here with the face, we've got an overlapping unwrap. What you want to do here is when you do your layout, you want to make sure that nothing is overlapping. Uh, 
it just by moving it like you would with any geometry. Now not everything has been merged together because they have different modifiers and at the moment I don't really feel like applying the modifiers just in case. I typically leave the modifiers on there just in case something messes up and I typically like to have my UVs symmetrical so you just need to unwrap one half of your mesh and the other half will be mirrored because you have the mirror modifier applied so right now we've got most of the face done the ears i'm going to do just one cut down here split them in half you can see here our ears have been split now with the lashes uh the way that i do them is i select them as a whole i press u and project from view and that flattens it out I only ever do this with stylized eyelashes because it just works. It works out. I'm just gonna adjust that. It's gonna be the same on the front and back. This can be particularly helpful for the one or two of the methods of texturing that I will show you guys later. But yeah, I typically do this for anime styled characters. I'm gonna do the same thing with the brows and the eyelids and with the eye shines and the eyes. Now the eyes aren't perfectly like flat looking forward so it might look a bit weird you can always rotate them if you want it's fine you can also a cut here and had them split in half and then just overlap them as best as you can they're not going to be perfectly fitting together but yeah as long as you can figure out which one is the front facing one uh you should be fine with doing whatever to the back one you can even you can even just make like the back of the iris just all black and make it fade to the black, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna quickly just hide the body and we are gonna do the same thing with the teeth. And then with the teeth, we can select one set and then just move them away from the other so they're not overlapping. Uh, I do it this way because it just looks a lot cleaner when I texture in Substance Painter. It'll make sense when we get to the texturing tutorials. With the tongue, we're gonna split it down the middle like that. I'm gonna Alt H to unhide. So now what we want to do, we have done everything on the face. So we're going to select all of the facial parts and then we're going to go into edit mode. And as you can see, it's a huge mess of just a bunch of uh, unwrap objects. So what we want to do is we want to go to face selection mode. I'm gonna deselect everything here. And then we're going to press L to just select certain parts of our mesh that we want to make a UV coordinate of. I'm just gonna select everything, most things are mirrored, other things aren't, which is fine. And as you can see, it's just like a huge mess of things. Um, okay, now I'm gonna move everything out of the UV coordinate and I'm going to start selecting parts of it. So I'm gonna start off with the face. I'm going to rotate it and then I'm gonna move it and resize it. And I want this to be basically the biggest part on my UV corner. We're gonna have the face as its own UV corner and then the body as its own. And now I'm going to get the relax tool. I'm gonna increase it and I'm gonna just relax the mouth if it'll let me. Why won't it let me? I'm so confused. Ah, there you go. You gotta make sure that the um, lighter color, so for you guys it might be a different color. For me, light pink is the latest selection, I think. Yeah, you gotta make sure that it's that color. I know it makes no sense. <laughs> um, and then you can edit it. So I'm just gonna relax the mouth area. It might look weird, but it's fine. I'm just gonna relax other areas so that nothing is overlapping. I'm gonna go back to my selection tool. I'm gonna grab the tongue. I'm gonna re oh, make sure that you're not selecting anything else. Resize them. And I'm gonna put them over here. Uh, you can do your UV layout however you feel makes the most sense to you. You can look up other 3D models and see how their UV layouts are done. But typically you don't really want anything going out of the big box. Uh, and you don't want anything overlapping with each other. I got the eyelash. I'm gonna move it up here. I'm gonna get the eyebrow and we're gonna move it up here. I'm gonna get the eyelid. And we're gonna put it beneath the eyebrow, the teeth, and we're gonna put them over here. And then the eye highlights, we're gonna put them right here. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale on the X by minus one. So then it flips it and I'm going to try and match them up as close as I can. That is so then they have like the same UV space. These ones are okay to overlap because I want them to be the exact same color uh, when I texture them. So they're going to be white. It's fine to overlap some things if you plan to have them be overlapped. Technically, once we apply the mirror modifier, the other half of the face will be overlapped on the other UV space. Same with the teeth and same with anything else that is mirrored. So the iris, I'm going to move here. I'm going to make this kind of big because I feel like the iris uh, needs to have like the most UV space to have a really good texture. The inside of the mouth, we're going to put here. This is just going to be a solid color, so it doesn't really matter if it's like big or small. The sclera, we're going to put that right here. And then the ears, we're going to put right here. This is the back of the ear. I'm going to move it here. This is the front of the ear, so that needs to be a bit bigger because it's got a bit more detail. And now we're going to go around and just relax some things that we feel like need to be relaxed and uh, hope that none of the detailing gets too messed up. So as you can see, I can't relax the um, iris. So I need to go back into object mode and select, shift select the iris, and then I can edit it in the UV layout. Okay, I'm not gonna do anything to the teeth because then I'll mess up what I'm going for. Uh, don't really need to relax the inside of the mouth either because it's just gonna be one solid color. Uh, I'm not gonna do it to the eyelashes either. Okay, so that is our face unwrapped. I'm gonna go into object mode, deselect everything, select the body again, and we're going to be unwrapping the body now. So there are probably many different ways that you can unwrap a body. You can add seams anywhere you feel like fits, but I'm going to show you where I put the seams most of the time, and I feel like this is the best uh, placements for the seams. So we're going to start at the arms, and I'm going to select the edge around the shoulder so then we can detach the arm from the rest of the body. I'm going to go to underneath the arm and I'm going to select the center edge and then I'm going to deselect anything that goes down the side of the torso and the legs because we don't want to. And then I'm going to deselect just this little edge here. I'm going to mark a seam and then around the wrist I'm going to mark a seam here. And now with the hand we're going to put a seam that goes around here and we're going to deselect the ones that are are going up the arm because we don't want that apart from the ones that connect to the wrist little seam and then we are going to add a seam here and then with the nails we're going to go around each of the nails so at the bottom of the nails where it's connected to the skin of the hand and now you're probably thinking well the nail for the thumb is going to be split because we have a split down the middle here that is fine what we're going to do is we're going to go into a uh, base selection mode and then with L we're going to select each side of the thumbnail. We're going to clear the seam and then we're going to go into edge mode and then we're going to re-add the seam around the skin. So then the nail isn't split, thumb is still split as we need it to be. And that is the arm unwrapped. Now if you have a female character you can add an edge around the breasts but I personally don't do that. Uh, you can add an edge around the belly button if you want but again I don't do that. We're going to go down in the middle of the legs. We're going to remove the ones by the ankle, mark seam. Then we're going to add one around the ankle, mark seam. And then we're going to go around the bottom of the foot, around the toes. Uh, you can select multiple edges by shift clicking, uh, by shift and alt, as you can see down here. I'm clicking, mark seam. And then we're going to go down the middle back of the foot, or as middle as you can get with how many vertices you have, and mark seam. And now you can uh, do the same thing as you did with the hands and unwrap the nails. But I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to find the foot, and I'm going to unwrap this way. So I believe these are where the toenail starts. So I'm going to unwrap and select each of these, like so. There you go. Now as you can see, uh, we have messed up, and uh, the face has undone. So this is where the live unwrap messes everything up. So I'm going to undo everything, and then I'm going to go to you, and I'm going to deselect the unwrap, and then I'm going to do it over again. And I'm just going to select the body part that has been unwrapped, and then we're just going to unwrap it, and then we're just going to reposition everything. And you can separate the leg from the torso, but I feel like this kind of unwrap is a lot better. Got to unwrap the back of the foot, I'm just going to unwrap again, and then we're going to just unwrap all the toenails again, and move everything out, and just 
position everything in a nice way. Making sure that nothing goes out of bounds. Now, if you didn't have a symmetry enabled, uh, it would be best if you did your UV map as left and right. So then you know which one is the left and which one is the right. And if you are working in a company, there might be a texture artist that is separate from you. You just do the modeling and the unwrapping and the texture artist does all the texturing. So it would be best to unwrap everything that makes sense and will help your texture artist figure things out where things are meant to go. Now you can see that I used the relax tool and it kind of made things a bit too tight. So I'm just going to select edges around the nails and just increase the size of them. It's just so then it's a lot easier to texture like so. And that is the entire body unwrapped. It's really simple. It's really fast as long as you know where you're going to be putting your cuts. Remember that you have tools to relax and you can also pinch if things feel like they're a bit too wide. Just make it a lot more readable for you, especially with uh, one method of texturing, which is texturing outside in a art program, such as Clip Studio Paint, Paint Tool Sci, uh, stuff like that. It's just going to make your life a lot easier if you unwrap in a nice way. So yeah, I hope that this tutorial helped. I hope it really did help you guys uh, understand unwrapping a bit more, especially when it comes to unwrapping characters. Um, the next one will be either going over hair if you guys want me to go over unwrapping hair. It's really easy to do, but I typically do not unwrap my hair because of the way that I texture hair. I feel like it looks better the way that I do it. Uh, if not the hair, then we'll be moving on to unwrapping the clothes. I might do the clothes in multiple parts or I might do it all in one go. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope that helped. And I'll see you guys in the next video that I decide to do. Bye guys.